Hello friends, today we will be doing some sample questions for SASMO grade 3. Uh, these are 10 questions. These are some of the sample questions for uh, SASMO exam. Let's read question number 1. Jane is 9 years old and John is 5 years old. How old will John be when Jane is 15 years old? So the information that we have, Jane is 9 years John is five years. And how old will John be when Jane is 15 years old? So nine plus what is 15? Six years. So similarly, we will do uh, five plus six. So John will be 11 years old when Jane is 15 years old. So my answer is 11 years. See, SASMO is a little different uh, in terms of... Uh, in terms of competitive exam, because you do have a mix of open-ended questions. So you don't have, uh, you know, for some questions, you don't have the MCQ types where you can pick from the options given. Now let's go to question number two. A textbook is open and random. To what pages is it opened if the product of the facing pages is 110? Facing pages means, suppose this is the partition. And Suppose now my drawing is not that great. So suppose you're reading a book and it's open like this. So this page and this page. So these are the facing pages. So the product, product means when you multiply something, uh, the product of the facing pages is 110. So we find factors for 110 through the listing method. So 1 into 110, 2 into 55. It will not go by 3 nor by 4. 5 into 22. And then we get... 10 into 11. So, uh, because whenever you have page numbers, they'll be consecutive numbers like one after the other. So, in this case, uh, uh, to what pages is it open if the product of the facing pages is 110? So, it will be 10 and 11. Let's do question number three. Jane has a rope of length 23 meter, 23 centimeters. She wants to cut the rope so that she can form the biggest possible square where the length of each side in centimeter is a whole number. Whole number means uh, there is no decimal or fractions. Like if suppose you're dividing, so you can't really do like this, 23 divided by 4. So I'll get 5.75. So you can't really do this because it's a whole number. You not have a decimal. So this is not the method that they're saying that it's a whole number. What is the length of the rope that she must cut to form a square? So basically you have a square and this is like a long rope of 23 centimeter. You want to cut it so that you get a square. Now the property of the square is all sides are equal. So the sides <clears throat> have to be a multiple of 4. Now if you see 23, let's go backwards. So 23 is not divisible by 4. Like it's not a whole number. Similarly, 22 is not divisible by 4. 21 is not divisible by 4 completely. 20 is divisible by 4. So 20 divisible by 4 is 5. So that each side is 5 centimeters. So what is the length of the rope that she should cut to form a square? She should cut it at 20 centimeters. So that will be my answer. Question number 4. Find the missing term in the sequence. So if you see the sequence, let's first, whenever you get in a sequence, first let's just find the difference. If the difference is common. So the difference between 1 and 2 is 1. The difference between 2 and 6 is a 4. 6 and 24 is a 18. So you don't see that, you know, there is a common difference. Like, you know, the, the difference here is the constant. So that is not the case. So whenever you don't get the same number or it's not a linear sequence, we look for multiplication. <clears throat> so let's just see. So if you see the pattern, 1 into 2 is a 2. Then you do like this into 2, then into 3, into 4. So if you see 2 into 3 is a 6, okay? And then if you do 6 into 4 is a 24. So what will happen here? You take this number, it comes here. You take, you take this number, so it is following this. So what will be the next number in the sequence? 24 into 5, that will be? It will be 120. And then if you want to check whether your answer is correct, so what will that be? 120 into 6 is a 720. So this matches. So what is the missing term in the sequence? It is number 120. 
Now let's go to question number five. On National Day, 39 soldiers lined up in a straight row on the opposite sides of Stadium Street to welcome Prime Minister Lee. A soldier stands on each end of the stadium street, the distance between two adjacent, adjacent means close to each other or next to each other. The distance between two adjacent soldiers on either side was 20 meters. The soldiers on one side were arranged such that each soldier filled the gap between the two other soldiers on the opposite side. How long is the stadium street? So basically it's a long question, but essentially what it means is there were 39 soldiers. So they were standing in straight row on opposite side. So like, you know, like there's one soldier standing here, then there is one more here, one more here, one more here. So 39, so if you see, so 20 on this side and like 20 on the, uh, 19 on the other side. So basically what it means is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 19 and 20. So these were the soldiers on one side and on the other side it will be here. So the soldier will be standing here. So it will be like this. So you already had 20 here. So 20 plus 19 will give me a 39. So 1, 2, 3 then 4 then 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 and 19. So the soldiers are standing here. So basically what happens is the Prime Minister will walk in between uh, as a you know, mark of respect. So that's what it means. So now we have to find how long was the stadium street. So that's how the soldiers were standing. Now the information given is that the distance between the adjacent soldiers was 20 meters. Correct? So this was the distance. Now if you see there were 20 soldiers, but then how many gaps are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. So the gap is 19. And each gap is 20 meters. So the total distance is 380 meters. So how long was the stadium street? It was of it was 380 meters. Question number six. At a workshop, there are 10 participants. Each of them shakes hand once. Only once with one another. How many handshakes are there? So what it means is, let's uh, take 10 participants to be A, B. You can take anything, but I'm just taking them as A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, and G. So at a workshop, there were 10 participants. Each of them shakes hand uh, once with one another. How many handshakes are there? So what does that mean that A will shake hands with B, then A will shake hands with C, A will shake hands with D. Similarly, so for A, there will be how many handshakes? Nine handshakes because there were ten. So A himself is shaking hands. So A will shake hands nine times. Then what will happen? What about B? So how many shake hands B will do? Now, what will happen? B will not shake hands with A because A has already shaken hands with B, right? So, B will do it with C, D, like that. So, for B, it will be how many? 8. Similarly, if you see this, so C will do it with 7. D will uh, do it with 6. E will do it with 5. F will do it with 4. G will do it with 3. H will do it with 2. And I will do it with only 1. Because I have shook hands with J, so J cannot go back and shake hands with I. Right? So these are the number of handshakes. So just add it up. How do we do a quick addition? We look for numbers which add up to 10. So 9 plus 1, 10. 8 plus 2, 10. 20. 7 plus 3, 10. 6 plus 4. So it's 40 and it's 45. So how many handshakes were there? There were 45 handshakes that day. Let's move on. Question number seven, what is the least number of cuts required to cut 16 identical sausages so that they can be shared equally among 24 people? So we have to basically look for a number like an LCM, which is common to both 16 and 24. So if we start, two eights are, two twelves are, then fours are, two six are, then two twos are, and threes are. So what would be my LCM here? We take 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 into 3. Basically that is 
48. So you need 48 pieces, okay, so as to distribute it amongst, equally amongst 24 people. So suppose these are six identical sausages, so you need to, uh, what is the least number of cuts that you need to do? Like if you put all of them together, 16 of them, then you have to cut it like this. So you make two cuts, so you get three pieces, like from each of them, so you do 16 into 3. So you get 48 pieces. So 48 pieces can be divided then amongst 24 people as, uh, you know, two, 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 two pieces each. Then we go to question eight. Charles has 16 marbles. He divides them into four piles so that each pile has a different number. Whenever you have a different number is a very important thing to note. Find the smallest possible number of marbles in the biggest pile. So basically you're making four piles. So let's just say pile one, Pile 2, Pile 3, and we say Pile 4. And this is 16. So they're saying what is the biggest number possible, uh, smallest possible number of marbles in the biggest pile. So this is the biggest pile. Uh, suppose you start here and all of them are different. Suppose if I say 2, 3, and 4. So what do I get? 2 plus 3, 5 plus 4, 9, and then 9 plus Oh, 7. Oh, yeah. 9 plus 7 is 16. So, he divides them into 4 piles so that each pile has a... Yeah. So, 7 could be a possible answer. But 7 is not my answer because they're saying what is the smallest possible number of numbers. So, we have to look for this to the smallest possible number. So suppose if we start here, uh, you know, suppose uh, you have to be, suppose one, two, and three, correct? And so this one has to be, or suppose, let's just take this to be a three, four, and a five, correct? So you get a seven, seven plus five is 12, and then you get 12 plus four is 16. So that is not possible because this number cannot be equal to this. This has to be, like you cannot have, the same uh, same digit. So then uh, what can we do? Suppose we start with a 2, 3, which is 5, and a 5, which is 10, and a 6. So this gives me a 16. All these are different numbers. So this is the smallest possible number that uh, number of marbles in the biggest file because it can be this or bigger than this. It cannot be smaller than this. So my answer would be number 6. Question number nine, the total cost of a pen or pencil is this. The pen costs 60 cents more than the pencil. How much does the pen cost? So we are going to do it through the model method. So they are saying the total cost of a pen, uh, a pencil and a pen is 290 cents. So as to say we have converted from dollars to cents. So a pen costs 60 cents more than the pencil. So if the pencil costs so much, the pen costs this plus 60. And the total of the costing is 290. So this is my equation. This plus this plus 60 is 290. Now 60 is common here. So what do I do? These two boxes are equal to 230. So that means 2 into this is equal to 230. So one box will be equal to 115. So what does that mean? That the cost of the pencil is 115 cents. Okay. So the cost of the pencil is 115 cents or 1.15 dollars. What will be the cost of the pen? It will be 115 plus 60, which will be 175 cents or dollar 1.75. So that will be my answer. Question number 10. What are the last two digits of the sum of this particular series. So it looks like a very complicated question, but it's pretty simple. So they're saying there are, it's going on till 50 digits. So that means you've added it 50 times. So what does that mean? That you're adding 111 50 times. And here in the second series, you're adding 111 49 times. Okay. So in this case, suppose you add this, you get 50. So you carry forward a 5. And in the uh, tens place you are adding it 49 times so 1 plus 1 plus 1 49 times you'll get 49 plus 5 or 49 plus 5 will give you 
a 54 and again a 5 carry. So the last two digits of the sum will be a 4 and a 0. So that will be my answer. Uh, I hope you like that video. Please subscribe to my channel for more such videos. Do leave a comment if you want me to solve a particular question or a particular paper from any of the competitive exams. Thank you for watching.